Slime Rancher is a beautiful game about landing on an alien world to explore, farm, and exploit the local fauna for material gain. And I'll be exploiting them to the max for all 57 achievements. There are three different sized slimes. Normal slimes, which have a bunch of different types, Largos, which are a combination of two different slimes, and Gordos. These fatties are so large that they don't even move, and you have to feed them a bunch until they pop, giving you some goodies. And that's exactly what I did for my first achievement. On the way back, I picked up some pink and rock slimes and threw them in a cage to start making money. Basically, if you feed a slime, they'll pop out some plorts, and those can be eaten by a different kind of slime to make Largos, or sold for money. I also made a chicken coop to start building up chickens, because we'll need a lot later. And immediately after leaving, I found my first gold slime. These boys are very rare and very skittish, but if you pelt them with resources, you'll get gold plorts, which are by far the most valuable. It's just a nice bonus now, but we'll need one for an achievement near the end of the game. Good lord! The range on this guy! After a little bit of grinding, I've already got the first achievement for selling plorts. We'll need to sell 5,000 for the last achievement, which might sound terrible, but it gets much easier after we have some automation tools for the ranch. Now we're unlocking our first area using the slime key we got from that Gordo earlier. This'll get us two achievements for using a slime key and discovering the moss blanket. Boop! This is also where we're making our first slime upgrade. Pink and rock are fine, but they're also the least valuable, so I'll be grabbing some boom and honey slimes, as well as mint mangoes, which are the favorite food of the honey slime. Every slime except pink has a diet of fruit, veggie, or meat. When they eat it, they drop one plort, but they also have a favorite food where they'll drop two. This is obviously good, but it gets even better with Largos. When a Largo eats the favorite food from either of its halves, both halves will drop double plorts, so we'll get four plorts plorts for each mint mango, which just shot up our profits. And we can use those profits for some upgrades. I shot some food into an angry slime's mouth and finished making the transition to boom honey largos. And it immediately started paying dividends with the achievements for making 5,000 new bucks and making 5,000 new bucks in a single day. I also finished up some achievements around the ranch by having three different fruit trees at the same time and maxing out a corral, coop, and silo. And with all of this success in my life, I decided to adopt an alternative lifestyle. Instead of keeping them in their cages, I destroyed all the corrals and put mint mango trees everywhere. That way, they could eat whenever they want, and I just have to pick up their shit from time to time. Once they're all set up, I got three achievements in under a minute. One for staying up for 24 hours, another for feeding slimes their favorite food 50 times, and finally one for being knocked out before 10 a.m. I sold a few more plorts and unlocked the 7Z Rewards Club. 7Z is mostly superficial upgrades at extortionate prices, but some of them are unbelievably useful. Ecosystem flourishes. Is. This is what it's all about. I popped a tabby gordo nearby because where he plopped his fat ass down is a great place to get the achievement controlling the chaos. I also held on to a tar for 15 seconds for another. Tars are what happens when you go too far. It takes two different slimes to make a largo, but if that largo eats a plort from a third type of slime, they go stinky. Oddly enough, they have a fatal weakness to water though, so whatever. At this point, I need to stay away from the ranch for 24 hours for while you were away. Oh my god, I'm going to die. So I shot a boom largo into the air and spent a good bit of time collecting plorts out on the rain. It was a bit of a blessing that this one took an annoyingly long time because when I warped back home, I got what I wanted as well as an achievement for making more money. Let's talk about chickens. There are three basic types. Chickadoos, hen hens, and roostros. Chickadoos can't be used as food and roostros are used to get more chickens when you put them together with hen hens. After a while, they'll turn into an elder roostro, the beginning and the end. And we have to incinerate them both. I got a fresh paint job, sold a few more plorts, and then fed another Gordo for a slime key to get into the indigo quarry. Here, we'll be diversifying our portfolio with rad slimes and crystal slimes. But before we pick up any of them, I need to stand in the radiation field of a rad slime for 15 seconds for the achievement that only works in comic books. I also snagged some Oka Oka, the favorite food of the rad slime. Once I got back home, I made three veggie plots and settled the rad crystals into their new home in the cave extension of the ranch. <laughs> hey! Hey buddy, a party Gordo. Look at this dude. Oh, I love this guy. Oh wow, you're growing fast. You do not need much. Oh, that's so cool. I have no, what the hell? Wait, it's actually a party slot? No, it's just a variant of pinks. Well, I want these. God, you're useless, but I want you. Ah, uh, they're cool. Hey, I acknowledge you're cool. 
Cooler than me. You're still just worthless though, so I'm leaving. At the back end of both the moss blanket and the indigo quarry, they connect back together in these sort of garden ruins. And in the back of this garden is a massive door. It doesn't need a slime key, but rather seven different types of plorts to be inserted in statues scattered around the area. That's a job for the future though. We've got some more achievements back home. I put three different Largos in the same pen for risky business, got into a pen with 40 slimes for ball pit, and put five unique slimes in a pool for pool party. And then there's the big one, bursting at the seams, which has you completely fill a fully upgraded silo. A silo has three slots on one side, and when maxed out, has four sides. Each of these slots holds 300 units, adding up to 3,600 total units of shit. It's a bit of a tedious grind, but if you put down a few fully upgraded farms, harvest them, deposit them, and sleep till morning so they're fully grown, and you can do it all again. With all that, I got the achievement in about 45 minutes. Although it did give it to me before it was actually full, so I don't know what to tell you. I made just a touch more money for Upper Crust and Plort Powerhouse, and from here on out, most of the achievements are a bit of a slog. To help us with them, I'll be buying the lab. It's a bit involved, but basically, you can deposit plorts as crafting materials to make stuff. There are also different resource collectors you can craft, which harvest resources that are used as crafting materials for everything else you can make. I made my first gadget, and now it's time to get some resources. Well, I'm making some pretty good money. You broke out of containment. Now you got a go buster. After a little bit of grinding, I made a pretty solid loop to get resources quickly. I'd wake up, harvest the pumps in my ranch, take a portal to the moss blanket to harvest my apiaries, and take the other portal to the indigo quarry for my drills. After I had enough of each resource, it was time to finally open the big door in search of new resources, namely quantum slimes. I got a bunch and warped back home to build my 35th gadget. The reason we need quantum plorts, other than income, is because it's an ingredient for making drones. Drones are the main element in the automation I mentioned at the beginning of the video. The other ingredient is hunter plorts. They're found in the moss blanket, but they are much harder to get a hold of. They're supposed to spawn infrequently at a few places, but I never had any luck, so I had to rely on scrounging for plorts from the feral honey hunters. With all the pieces in place, time to automate. I bought 10 slime toys for mint in box. I put a tar on a slime stage for best of the worst and got 50 points in a game of slime ball. This one is actually pretty difficult because you have to be a certain distance away for the shots to even count, and it actually starts moving when the game starts. What ended up working best for me was getting well over 100 slimes. I tried cheating and getting it from way above it, but it only registered once every few times, so I just had to play legitimately. Oh god. I also accidentally fed a pink slime the 10th unique food for omnivorous. With that done, it's time for the last area, the glass desert. Once we're in here, you'll notice these plants lying around. There are fountains nearby that can be activated by putting plorts into nearby statues. Afterwards, you can take the ancient water and shoot the plants with it to revitalize the desert and get the achievement renewal. And now's a good time to wrap up the story. No spoilers here, but there's two of them. One for getting to the end of the glass desert and one for getting the last email from Casey. I also finally fed a hundred chickens to slimes in the ranch. Now, there's only two more achievements in the normal story mode. One for completing the Slimepedia and another for getting three plorts from one gold slime. The Slimepedia is basically an encyclopedia for everything you've come across. Some of them are tutorials and locations, but most of them can only be added by physically picking them up. That includes all slimes, food, and resources. Most of this was easy, but there were three hiccups that got progressively more annoying. The first was echoes. There are little balls of light in the ancient ruins, and I just never picked one up. Then there were the DLC areas, which are unlocked by completing an exchange request after other criteria are met. The racetrack minigame was really fun, but this was the main thing I remembered. Holy shit, dude. My man's talking. A little annoying, but it pales in comparison to the final entry, the Gilded Ginger. Only two Gilded Gingers will spawn a day out of 74 possible locations. Almost all of these are well hidden, and some take a lot of climbing. And keep in mind that it takes more than a day to go through the locations, so it's entirely possible to check all of them without finding anything, which is exactly what happened to me. This one item on its own took almost two hours to find. It's absolutely absurd. Absurd how much harder this was to find than anything else in the game. <laughs> that sucks, dude. 
Oh, that sucks so bad. Now we need to get those three gold plorts by either using a gilded ginger, which I immediately lost without thinking about it, or using the golden sure shot upgrade from the 7Z Rewards Club, which costs an astronomical amount of money. Fortunately, I have a plort empire and have already made more than enough. Now we need to find a gold slime, which is based on pure luck. So now we just need a gold slime. Okay. <laughs> Search is over. Oh no, but don't scare it. Oh, what a dumbass. I just ran right up to him. Oh, what a bitch I am. I can't believe I just did that. Fortunately, that blunder only cost me about 10 minutes. After a little digging online, I found out where I could find 10 guaranteed gold slime spawns. Oh, multiple gold slimes now appear once in the moss blanket vault. After you beat the game, there will be three vaults that appear, and going in the moss blanket vault for the first time will have them spawn. I peppered them with a bunch of food and made off with my fortune and achievement. For the last three achievements, we'll be hopping over to Rush Mode, a time attack game mode where the goal is to get as much money as possible in the time limit, and we'll need 75,000 for the last three achievements. As soon as the timer started, I sprinted over to the pink slime to pop them for a slime key, and then use it to get boom and honey slimes from the moss blanket. Then I brought them back home and used the free range method I tried earlier. We're also going to be focused on the exchange requests here. I glazed over them earlier, but basically you give other farmers stuff and they give you other stuff in return. Mostly useless in the main game, but indispensable in Rush. Not only do they give you gilded gingers, which can be used on gold gordos for a huge chunk of cash, but they also give you time. Without these time bonuses, 75,000 points might not even be possible. And just before midnight, I made a game changing discovery. No, you're not allowed to craft anything. Do I have anything? Oh, I do! I have drones! Oh, it's fucking over for you bitches. Holy shit! With that in mind, as well as the massive gold slime fumble, I had to restart. Having drones makes corrals way more preferable than free range, since they're really slow at picking up plorts on the ground. This time I also made use of the teleporters they gave me to make a shortcut to the moss blanket and indigo quarry. And I used the indigo quarry to build up rad crystal largos in the cave extension. It's worth mentioning that there's a bonus for selling your first 25 of each type of plort. This will give you a 5% bonus to your final score for each Plort, except for a couple that give an 8% bonus. For that reason, I also got pink, rock, phosphor, and puddle plorts whenever I saw them. Outside of that, I just ran the same loop. Get plorts, sell plorts, do exchange requests, repeat. I just had to stay the course, and I'd be good. That is, until her. Mochi was the last request of the run, and she wanted a fire plort. Fire plorts can only be collected during solar events in the glass desert, which is on the other side of the map, and requires a slime key that I do not have. Even if I I did get it, it would have wasted as much time as I would have gained. So with that one stroke of bad luck, the run ended with a fizzle, and I was well short of 75,000 points. Almost two hours wasted, but I had learned some important things. Mainly, boom and honey plorts are both worth 45, while rad and crystals are worth 45 and 60. So going into the indigo quarry immediately is clearly the better option. I still went for the open range approach at the beginning so they could become largos on their own, but once they were, I switched gears and put them in corrals for the drones. I also did some parkour to avoid having to find a second slime key and put boom honeys in the cave this time. And with these couple differences, I was much better off. All that was left was to see what Mochi wants for the final exchange. And it was very easy. I snagged some honey plorts, ran out front for the phosphor plorts, and used the extra time to get a bunch of gold plorts and stack up my money to well over what I needed. With the bonuses, I crushed the score and got my last achievement. Thank you for watching. If you enjoyed, maybe check out this video right here and like and subscribe and all that good shit. It really does help even though I hate asking for it.